Hi, I'm Dan Liebel, a senior consultant at Stone Ridge Software, and this is Introduction to Management Reporter Part 2 on Rows. Uh, we're back in Management Reporter, and we've discussed many of the fields in, in Part 1 on the row definitions, but let's zero in on the link to financial dimensions in Part 2. With regards to adding accounts, let's create a new Let's open up a blank row for a moment and let's click and I'll show you how to whoops, edit insert rows from dimensions. And once that window opens, then you can go in here and you can insert your accounts from AX depending on how you want to pull things in. So in our case, we just want to pull in a main account because we're going to look at it as a balance sheet in this case. So I have the ampersand, so we'll go out and look at that. The pound signs means that it will pull in that all of the matches that apply to those specific dimensions. But in our case, we'll just keep it simple. We're just going to do um, main account. So if we double click, and it will look at it by columns. So the first number will be what it reads. So if I do one, it will include everything that's greater than one. So uh, all of the accounts that I have and as an asset that are greater that start with one will be included. And conversely, with the end range, it's the same scenario where it will look at the first digit. So my sales or revenue counts start with a 4, so if I go 39, it will include everything less than that. Unless, of course, I had you know something that's 39-something that I didn't want to include, but um, you get the idea. So if I click OK on that, that will pull in all of the GL accounts I have in AX, um, and in this case, we're looking at the USMF Contoso company in the demo data. So in this case, it brought in for each account, it created a row. So we don't necessarily need to have all of these rows. So we'd probably want to include, um, you know, combine some of them into, um, into one row because we don't need to have that long of a balance sheet. It gets kind of confusing to end users as well if you have that. But in some cases, you may want a detailed balance sheet or an income statement that includes all accounts. Conversely, um, so in this case, um, to explain, because um, we're covering um, the, the link to financial dimensions column, I showed this because this is how we can exp do um, adjustments to our link to financial dimensions. So for example, on, um, we don't really want to have um, all of these bank accounts listed here we just need to show we'll just combine them all into one so to do that um, first we would double click on our link to financial dimensions and open up our um, dimension page again and if you recall when we did the insert from dimensions we had all of those different uh, dimensions or or different segments then listed and what I did differently is I had I created my own dimension set. So by clicking on the pencil icon, you can create your own and identify which segments or dimensions that you wanted to include. Um, in our case, we just want to use business unit, department, and cost center. So I created one to just show those three, just to keep it simple and easier to to manage. And by by clicking in a cell, it opens up another window where you can do account ranges. You can also type into that cell if you want and you can look up the range. So if I look up here, because I already have an account, it's only going to show that one account, just like in X AX lookups. <clears throat> the end range, I want to have my last bank account, so I'll select that. And when I click OK, you get the colon or the range, just like we had in, in part one, where we showed the, the total range on the rows. The same scenario applies to main account. If I click OK, then I have my range there. So then what I need to do is I need to highlight these other rows and delete them. And I can right click and delete row, just like in Excel, as we mentioned before. And then I need to change my uh, description for that row to identify that. I'll just call it bank accounts to keep it quick and easy. Other options that you can do, um, there's a lot of options that you can use in that link to financial dimensions. Um, that's an example of a range. Um, if I go back in there, I could also <coughs> add other accounts to it or subtract accounts. If I have a contra account that I wanted to net into one row, 
um, I can do something like that. But let's uh, let's add another row just so you can kind of see how that works. Let's go down um, and add bonds, for example. And click OK. Now if I click OK again, and expand my link to financial dimension so we can see it, it shows that we have a range plus this other main account. So, and then I would again need to, would probably want to update my description to I reflect that change. So it's really simple, a lot of flexibility how you want to display your, your financial statements or any report, auto management report. Or another option is you can also use wild cards. So let's go down to our deposits where all of our deposits start with 1121. So if we double click on this again, double click on our row, and we can put in question marks as a wild card, click OK. And then we can delete our other deposits. And actually, I forgot to delete my bonds row, so let's delete that as well. And then let's go in and just make this called deposits. Um, that's how simple it is. So if you're manually typing it in, um, it doesn't take long to, you know, unless you have a very extensive um, chart of accounts, it doesn't take long to go in and complete. Um, and there are, um, you know, as far as missing accounts, you can, there's reports that you can run that will flag missing accounts. So you can do a double check that way, or, you know, you can um, just audit your own row formats and go through them with, a, with, your, with your chart of accounts on a sheet of paper or Excel on the side and, and follow it up that way. Um, another thing to mention about um, creating your rows, um, if you're lazy, you want to go the, sh the shortcut way. There's um, options when you install Manager Reporter, you get sample reports um, and sample rows and columns that go along with those reports. And if you want to use, look at uh, some of these rows. Let's look at the summary income statement because we had that up previously. What you notice in the link to financial dimensions is um, they have. Uh, the categories are the main category. So if you're on your chart of accounts, if you're filling in that category um, and it fits the categories that you're using on these reports, you can easily just plug and play. So use this um, as your row format and then plug in your own column, whether you want, you know, and we'll talk about columns in the next session, but plug in your column and then you're ready to go. You should be all set to go and it'll pull in data because it's looking at that main account category on your chart of accounts. Another thing that you can utilize is um, if you go edit and row links, it opens up another window. So in this case we have, um, I bring this up because if you have multiple companies and maybe one of these other companies has a different format or a different format of a chart of accounts, it's formatted differently or it doesn't match the same one. So you can't use the same row. For example, in our in our uh, Contoso company, it had a six digit or five digit um, chart of account or a main account segment. Maybe your one of your other companies has a four segment chart of accounts or main account. So you may you'd use this row links or this link to financial dimensions to to match them up. And in this case, um, they're using uh, Dynamics GP as, as a link um, option so that they can combine a GP GL structure and an AX GL structure and create one report uh, based out of it. And they're using the main account categories as the way to link those two together. So just an example of some of the flexibility that you have with your role formats. One last thing I want to leave you with is how to save a row format. So let's go back to our balance sheet that we had started on earlier. And if I click on File, Save, and you can also um, use the, the Save icon that you're familiar with from Microsoft products. Click on File, Save. It opens up the Save As window. And there I can give it a, a description or a name that you'll see in your, your row of definition list. So make it descriptive enough to explain to users or yourself that what you have included in that particular row format. The description is just a longer length description of, of what that is.
can also use the Save As button, so go File, Save As. So if you have an existing row format that you want to copy and make some changes to, you can keep both of them, just do a Save As and give it a slightly different name, and then go in and make changes to the one that you don't want to keep.